and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from the majority of the videos I've been producing, which have been mostly focused on nature and natural sciences and the outdoors in California. Uh, and today's video is going to be on the theme of book reviews, which I've done one already. Book reviews on books written by academics that uh, really, I think, uh, do have, uh, an amazing job uh, trying to explain uh, a lot of our uh, turmoil in cultural and po culture and politics in the 2010s. Um, I already reviewed, of course, uh, The Coddling of the American Mind by Jonathan Haidt and Greg Lukianoff. And today I'd like to review a book that I read about a year and a half ago titled The Once and Future Liberal After Identity Politics by Mark Lilla. This is actually a pretty short book. It's about 140 pages uh, on pages that are actually quite small with fairly large type. So it's uh, a book that can be read pretty quickly and I think uh, does give a lot of unique insight from an, an academic perspective in terms of things that have been going on in the last few years. Uh, Mark Lilla is a professor of the humanities at Columbia University in New York City. Uh, so he lives in New York, though he is originally from suburban Detroit in Michigan, uh, Macomb County, which uh, was well known as being a, uh, a bellwether county uh, where there was, back in the early 80s, there was what was known as the Reagan Democrats, basically white working class people that uh, voted uh, for Reagan after being primarily voting Democrat, being union workers and so forth. So. Um, so, yeah, he wrote this. This book is actually a con a con was as actually a continuation of an article that he wrote just after Trump got elected in November of 2016 called The End of Identity Liberalism, which was published in the New York Times. Uh, this article got a lot of criticism, and he got a lot of flack uh, because by critiquing or criticizing identity politics coming from a white male, uh, of course, a lot of people said, well, you know, he's just has privilege or is using his white male privilege. And, uh, but it's really important to note that uh, Mark Lilla is clearly uh, a solid, solidly socially liberal. Uh, he uh, wants this kind of, uh, he votes for a lot and supports a lot of the general liberal or left-wing principles uh, wants to ensure equality and equity for all and uh, to uh, uh, so he is a liberal basically by any definition uh, but what his criticism has been is that how identity politics has really balkanized uh, the American electorate of um, among, among Democrats where he uh, claims that it used to be about what we are what the common good uh, starting with you know the new deal of uh, Roosevelt and I'll come back to that in a moment all the way through the 70s or the great society and civil rights of the uh, 60s um, so he claims of course that identity politics is really uh, defined as in his definition it, at least in the way that he criticizes it is about um, self-expression, self-absorption, rather than being p persuasive and winning elections. Uh, and, you know, he uh, certainly, uh, in both the article that was published as well as in the book that was uh, then published in the fall of 2017, so I read it about a year and a half ago, just when it came out, uh, is that the young people today that are in college uh, uh, are very used to the, you know, talking about diversity, um, you know, to an extreme degree, but have uh, little to say about perennial topics like uh, issues of war or the economy, uh, and assuming that uh, the diver that diversity can basically, you know, talking about from a diversity perspective can basically explain all these things. So, um, so yeah, he, um, uh, well, a couple of things that, that he points out that uh, Mark Lilla points out is that uh, in the past 80 years, the U.S. went through two dispensations. Uh, it almost vaguely feels a little bit similar to uh, Neil Howe's and uh, uh, Neil Howe's book, uh, uh, the uh, 
forth turning someone, the idea of like historic cycles. But he basically, Lilla basically says that there was a what was called the Roosevelt Dispensation, which started in the, in the 1930s in response to the Great Depression, started with the New Deal. Uh, and of course acknowledges that minority groups, African Americans, were left out of a lot of the New Deal benefits, but uh, he goes on to talk about how in the 60s the civil rights uh, essentially still corrected for that, but still was on the same theme of what do we all have in common, our common vision, um, and uh, things of this nature. Uh, as well as the Great Society program, but he said by the 70s, by the Car Carter administration, with things like stagflation, uh, the Watergate scandal, uh, basically the uh, Roosevelt dispensation was becoming um, kind of ossified, sort of uh, outdated, and so Reagan came in and created this new vision of individualism, you know, and, and what became, became libertarian and a, uh, idea, an individualism based on that everything's about the, the individual family, individual communities, and let's dismantle government and things like that. And he points out that regardless of who was in office during either of these two dispensations, the same general cultural theme was going on. For example, Eisenhower was a Republican during the, the Roosevelt dispensation, but again, he didn't really do anything to touch the New Deal or anything like that. Uh, likewise, Bill Clinton in the 90s was still about talking about smaller governments and uh, uh, the era of big government is over and it's about, and it's about the economy stupid and uh, he uh, passed a crime bill and a lot, a lot of these things. So, um, uh, But he basically states that the uh, in the same way that on the conservative or right-wing side was all about uh, being this very individualistic, low taxes, uh, small government kind of way of thinking, he state he basically goes on to talk about how the identity politics were, which is which was more about a self uh, about self expression, was really a left wing version of the same idea, kind of this individualistic sort of, not really caring as much about the whole common good. Um, so again, he got some criticism for this, but uh, I really think it is a good book to check out. Uh, he certainly talks a lot about how the left uh, today is um, approaches things in an almost religious nature. Um, you know, almost like about how about uh, how there's sort of a elements of witch hunts going on. Um, and it's really interesting for me personally going back to this because I read this a year and a half ago in the, in the fall of 2017. It's now the spring of 2019. And, uh, but it's really, it's really interesting kind of looking back at that and uh, kind of seeing, you know, did we really, did anyone really learn anything from what uh, Mark Lillo was saying? But he's basically saying that he wants liberal Democrats to win. Uh, and you can't win if people are divided by uh, identity politics where it's all about as an X, I believe Y, or, uh, you know, as an X identity group. Uh, so anyways, it's really a lot of uh, some, some pretty interesting things. Um, and uh, so I definitely do recommend uh, checking this book out. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to do a short uh, video talking about who I think who are uh, the, about uh, these two candidates I, I have in mind that are running for president, uh, the presidential election for 2020, who I think in my mind have most uh, kind of answered the call to Lilla's challenge. Uh, so one thing uh, Mark Lilla says is that to young people is that if you really want to win electoral politics, you have to go uh, out to parts of the country where the Wi-Fi is non-existent, the coffee is weak, and uh, the food at the diner is nothing that you'd want to post on Instagram. Uh, kind of, I think that kind of sums things up, uh, is that uh, you have to go out into the kind of areas of the country that are not necessarily voting for the kinds of things that you want uh, to uh, to be supported and uh, the uh, so anyway it's a really interesting th uh, book I do really really recommend it again it's titled the once and future liberal after identity politics by Mark Lilla uh, and I'll uh, uh, but if that's a little you know you don't have enough time to read a 140 page book um, the article in the New York Times is called the end of identity liberalism I will include that in the description if you want to check it out and you can make up your own mind. Uh, so with that, uh, that 
uh, sums up my short, brief review of this book. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.